Hello everybody, today I want to talk to you about rod puppets. That's right, I want to talk to you about rod puppets. Most people have seen the uh, puppets where you put your hand to manipulate the mouth. But a rod puppet is a puppet that you actually take and you pull a trigger and it uses a return to return the mouth back into place. Now on this one, I used an old glue gun and I just used it to trick them uh, on the gun and hooked up to a string and that hooked up to the mouth and made it open and close. Uh, if you want to see how I made this, you can go to Troy Pico the Works on Facebook and I have a picture tutorial on how I did that step by step. So, but I'm going to show you right here how rod mechanisms work. It won't be a how to make a certain puppet, but I'm going to teach you how to make the actual mechanism so that anything you want to turn into a puppet, a rod mechanism is a great way to do it. All right, so but the basics of uh, rod puppetry is it has a rod. <laughs> what? Yes, I know. It's, it blows the mind. I think they call it rod puppet and it has a rod. But yes, it has a rod that goes all the way down the center of the puppet. And we have an example here. I use a piece of PVC pipe so that you can see uh, that what it is. But you could use dowel rod, you could use anything you want, uh, anything you get comfortable with to make your rod puppet. So it has a rod that goes down the center of the puppet. And at the top of that rod, you will need to connect the upper jaw of the puppet. All right, the top jaw of the puppet. Uh, you will have to have connected to the rod, just like we have here. Now on mine, see if I can draw this upside down for you. Your top jaw's like this, my rod's in the center, okay? And so what I did is I, had, I created a piece that I glued to my top jaw and also attached to my rod, okay? And that's how I attached it there. So now my top jaw, if you look here, is free floating here. This is the attachment part, this is this, all right? And then this is where my top jaw would be, except that it's actually be on top of it. Like so. And that would be my top jaw. So that's how my rod puppet is attached here. All right, and then you would need your bottom jaw and you would just hinge it to your top, top jaw. So right in here is where you would hinge your bottom jaw to it. Now this needs to freely open and close, okay? So that this, uh, when you pull down on the bottom jaw here, it opens it up. Now to make a rod uh, work, a rod puppet work, you need to have some type of lever or return connected to your bottom jaw that holds it closed. On, uh, I choose to use springs, but you could use elastic or anything you would like to do that. And when you pull on your string down here on the trigger, it extends whatever you use for a return and, and puts it in a uh, pressure situation, a bind, and then when you let go, it goes back to neutral, which would then flip your bottom jaw back in place. And I will show you that right here on this example. As you can see here, I have a spring connected to my bottom jaw, which is hinged to my top jaw. Now I 3D printed these, but any way you make a puppet jaw work will work if you use gaffer's tape or if you use um, some duct tape or anything like that. However you hinge your jaw will work fine. It's the same concept. So when you pull your bottom jaw down, your spring gets tension or your elastic gets tension. All right, and you can hold it open until you let your trigger go and it will snap it back into place. That's called a return because it returns it back to its neutral position. So the whole thing about rod puppetry is you want something to be able to pull it open and return it back to its neutral position. All right, this would allow you to make anything into a puppet. Now what you simply do is hook some type of cable mechanism like right here. I've uh, printed a little eye on the bottom but you can easily use a eye screw or something like that to put on the bottom a little nail uh, a bolt you can even just poke a hole two holes and tie a knot 
however you choose to do it and whatever uh, materials you use to make your mount, uh, jaw plates out of, you can put whatever you want in there. And so you just simply tie a string, pull it down to a trigger, and set it off. Pull, opens, returns, closes, all right? So that really is the basics on how to build a working rod puppet. Now with that mechanism and the simple basics there, you could do all sorts of things. On uh, this rod puppet that I did, once again, 3D printed parts, um, just experimenting. Uh, I use the same concept that we've been talking about, a pull, it's got a return, it's got the spring right there in place, and when I pull the trigger, which is just a simple little 3D printed, anything can be a trigger that your finger can fit into, mine would just fit in there like that. As I pull it, it opens and closes the mouth, just like that. Now this one actually happens to have blinking eyes on it, like this, and it's the exact same concept. It has a pull, it pulls it, and then it has elastic that triggers them back to their neutral position. I'll show you more about that in the future if anybody's interested. Uh, another puppet that I can show you is this guy right here. Uh, he's carved foam. He has uh, foam teeth, the mouth, the jaw, uh, mouth plates are actually vacuum formed mouth plates, but same thing, rod puppet, trigger mechanism, uh, I mean exactly like the diagram is how his mouth was created. But I used a bike cable on this one. Uh, have you seen in the 3D printed one? It was a different type of trigger mechanism. Use a bike cable on this one. Uh, some people use them and that's great. Uh, I, I tend to find that they uh, add weight to your puppet and it's all about the weight. And I know the song says it's about the bass, but it's all about the weight when it comes to puppetry. Because uh, if you're doing a long puppet show, that weight will wear on you, man. I'm telling you right now. <laughs> All right, so this one also has a side-to-side -side eye mechanism that I can explore in the future if you're interested in learning that. And this one also had uh, an LED light in its helmet. If I can plug this battery in, bear with me. There you go. That would light up the inside of its helmet right there. I also have... Uh, this is an older puppet that I did. It's a cat. And it was probably the simplest pull of them all. And that's exactly what it is. It's just a string. It's just a string and a loop. And that's how he makes my mouth move by using a string and a loop. Right? So, right here, as you can see, I just use the old keychain right there, hooked to a string that runs up. And the same, the same concept to attach to the bottom jaw, and when I pull it, it has a return, and it returns my mouth back into place. Yeah! <laughs> so that scaredy. Here's another simple mechanism. This is actually the foam version of the hard plastic version I showed you at the beginning. And uh, he has a simple pull. This was actually a trigger. This was a lid from a um, ink cartridge for my uh, inkjet printer, right? And it was the top that protected it. And so I pulled it off. I said, man, that looks like a cool trigger. And it works great. So it's attached to a T for PVC, small PVC. T, I just uh, cut out the centers. Hope you can see that there. And so the trigger, trigger can pull. And that's exactly all I did. Is I pull it and his mouth works. And he also has blinking eyes. It's a push-pull uh, pull. It actually got bent, so it makes some noise. But it opens and closes the eyes. Now, this one has no string or no return, so it's just freely, I can put it in position, pull it out of position, like so, all right? And when I do that, it closes and blinks the eyes, okay? And I can op uh, open and close, open them all away, 
close them all the way. Now I could easily set it to a neutral position and then I could have put a spring at the bottom and the top and when I pulled and let go the return would bring it back to center or pull down the return would bring it back to center. So this concept that I showed you today about pulls and returns you can actually use to do all kinds of things and really that's how I make most of the mechanics that I use in my puppetry as you can see on the inside it's just pulls and returns all right and so we can go in more into blinkers and all that kind of stuff extra stuff in the future but today that's rod puppets I hope you guys enjoyed this if you could do me a favor if you find that you picked up any tips or you enjoyed seeing the behind the scenes uh, from this video would you please hit the like button that way I can kind of gauge to see if you guys are uh, getting anything out of it and it's worth your time to watch so I appreciate you joining me today uh, hopefully we can come up with some more tutorials in the future thanks for joining me bye